What is up YouTube? It's your girl Evelyn and as someone whose literal job it is to know which movies and TV shows have gays in them, I am still frequently caught off guard by rogue queer characters popping up in movies I had no idea they were in. So today I thought I'd highlight some movies and shows that pleasantly surprised me with hidden gays. Now are these movies and TV shows you've already seen? Probably, but I need some internet content. Say something I'm giving up on. I'll be honest, your girl is not the biggest fan of action movies, but Everything Everywhere All at Once has nevertheless become my favorite movie of 2022. Don't stop playing. Play something for me. Everything Everywhere All at Once follows Evelyn, a middle-aged Chinese immigrant who basically traverses the multiverse and risks her many, many, many lives to save her daughter Joy, who, turns out, is a big old queer. Unfortunately, Evelyn and Joy's relationship is a bit strained, even though Evelyn seemingly accepts Joy's sexuality and her girlfriend Becky, it's a surface-level acceptance. And not to spoil the movie, but there's also a universe where Evelyn herself is not only gay, but in a loving, if not challenging, relationship with another woman. And despite their hot dog shaped appendages, their relationship is still pretty damn sweet, if not slightly nauseating. And even though there's no such thing as a perfect movie, everything everywhere all at once comes pretty close. Everybody hurts. I'll admit, I know next to nothing about the X-Men. In fact, I think the last X-Men movie I watched was this one. But when I found out my girl, Arya, not today Stark, was joining the X-Men franchise, I had to support. Little did I know she was not only playing a badass mutant, but also the world's most adorable little lesbian, slash direwolf. Your eyes. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't. They're beautiful. The New Mutants is about a group of severely traumatized, superpowered teenagers. And when I say these kids are traumatized, I mean they are totally f up. And while most of the movie is them doing battle with an army of Slendermen and a ghost bear, they still manage to, uh, get it in, if you know what I mean. I'm just kidding, they don't have sex, but they do manage to sneak in a little makeout sesh and some light petting. Aww. Now, I know this film had a lot going on in the back end and was heavily criticized when it was finally released, but as a casual viewer, I thought it was fine. Besides, I'm a big fan of the Flatliners, It, Nightmare on Elm Street plot device of having your PTSD come to life and kill you. What better place to hide a gay lady character than in a show called The Boys? Amazon Prime's extraordinarily gritty and extremely f***ed up show about a group of superheroes that aren't quite the good guys we always assumed they were. Who in the seven is gay? Queen Maeve. Mm-hmm. Scoop for you, Maria. <laughs> Maeve here is a strong, proud lesbian with a beautiful girlfriend, Elena. Hispanic girlfriend. Queen Maeve is the queer in question, and she pretty much has Wonder Woman's powers, superhuman strength, invulnerability, and she can fly. But most importantly, she is literally a bisexual queen. Even though we learn about Maeve's queerness in season one, it's not until the second season that her sexuality becomes a big part of the plot, and we get to see more of her relationship with her ex-girlfriend slash current girlfriend, Elena. I have to warn you though, The Boys is not a warm, fluffy, and happy show. When I said it was extraordinarily gritty before, I wasn't exaggerating. So if you prefer watching warm, fluffy, and happy things, do not watch this show, even for the gay. But for those of you interested in a hyper-realistic and bloody superhero tale, you might want to give it a shot. She's gotta cut my head off, but I don't care. Named after a very lovely and non-racist man, Lovecraft Country is a super intense, squirm-inducing, dark fantasy horror show set in the 1950s, and it follows a black man who travels across the segregated United States in search of his missing father. And it's super queer. Your spell's going to work. And you have me now. Have you ever? No. It's my first time. 
Now, the LGBTQ representation in Lovecraft Country is somewhat controversial for reasons, but to be fair, I think the show itself is purposefully controversial. It's definitely meant to stir the pot, and it does. But speaking only of the show's lady queerness, it's a little weird. I don't want to spoil the show if you haven't watched it yet, but let's just say the lady gay is so well hidden, she literally comes out by shedding her skin. Literally. Also, if you're a fan of happy queer endings, nothing to see, move it along. Even still, the gayness in Lovecraft Country was a nice surprise, and the show itself is extremely well made and wonderfully weird. Come to me now. The Haunting is a brilliant horror anthology series that so far consists of just two seasons. I'm sure most of you have probably already watched or at least heard of season two, The Haunting of Bly Manor, because it's super duper lady gay. You're my best friend. And I love my life. And I don't know how much time we have left. But however much it is, I'm gonna spend it with you. While the first season of the Haunting series, The Haunting of Hill House, wasn't nearly as gay as Bly Manor, my bisexual queen Theo did not disappoint. I loved Theo when she was Catherine Zeta-Jones. I loved Theo as Kate Siegel. I just love Theo. She can get it whenever she wants. Anywho, I just wanted to shout out the Haunting series because Mike Flanagan, let's go lesbians! Even his other Netflix show, Midnight Mass, has a lesbian in it. My guy Mike is down for the cause and I for one appreciate him. This is a to include V for Vendetta because even though it's old as hell, when I watched it, I had no idea a sweet lesbian love story was hidden in its core. Her name was Sarah. It was her wrists. They were beautiful. I thought we would love each other forever. And even though the lesbian love story in V for Vendetta has like a two minute runtime, it was still a very pleasant surprise in a movie I did not expect any queer shenanigans in. <laughs> I've talked about the baby before on this channel and I also reviewed it over on my Patreon, but I'll say this. The baby is a witty British dark comedy about an evil baby surrounded by lesbians, more or less. Outer Range is an Amazon Prime Western about a family dealing with a mysterious wormhole or something that has inexplicably appeared on their ranch. And even though the family, specifically the patriarch, is the main focus of the show, there is a gay lady sheriff who is easily my favorite character. She's married, she has a kid, and she doesn't get nearly enough screen time. Just a light warning, I would only recommend Outer Range to those of you who like shows like The Leftovers, Station Eleven, and Lost. Because it's fucking weird. Star Trek Lower Decks is an- Sorry for the interruption, but I just realized I've been mispronouncing Star Trek for my entire life. I'm going to go die now. Sorry. Animated Star Trek series. And even though I haven't watched it, because ain't nobody paying for Paramount Plus, I've heard really good things about it. And apparently there's a queer lady character who seems to be in the process of getting into a relationship with another lady character. So there you go. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Lightyear, Scream 5, and The Mitchells vs. The Machines are a few more mainstream films that have a little queer lady representation hidden in them if you're interested. That is it for the video. I want to give a quick shout out to my newest patron patrons, Kenzie and B. Flynn. As always, thank you so much for watching and make sure to let me know in the comments if you've ever been watching a movie or show and been surprised by the appearance of a rogue gay.